Lord Cuckoo has commissioned a royal scavenger hunt. Your team of mice ride on the hands of the cuckoo clock, jumping on and off to collect items and more in the game Hickory Dickory. <laughs> Thank you for joining us at Tantrum House Studio D. I'm Melissa Dell. And I'm Kevin Delp. Hickory Dickory is a set collection game with aspects of worker placement. It's for one to four players. It takes about one and a half hours to play. It's designed by Sawyer West and published by Plaid Hat Games. They did send us this copy to review. We'll give a quick overview of the gameplay and then share our experiences and opinions. We'd love for you to like this video and definitely make a comment below. So, like, why did you decide to watch this video? Were you interested in the game, the thumbnail, it caught your attention, or you just love all things Tantrum House? <laughs> Liking and commenting really does help out the channel so we can continue to put out content for you. The main game board is one big cuckoo clock with an hour and minute hand and even chains at the bottom that the mice run up. There's also a bag with item tiles. Players have their group of mouse meeples and cards. Here's a quick overview of the game. There are five rounds. In each round, the minute hand rotates around the clock. The mice sit on it and will be jumping on and off the minute hand, taking various types of actions. The main way of getting points is delivering items and going up the chains of the clock. Let's jump in and look at a tick of the clock a little bit more in depth. The minute hand moves to the next number. Each mouse on the hand is activated and can either stay on or jump off. If a mouse jumps off, they can take a tile that's there and perform the action at that spot. The tile is placed on that mouse's card. Next, the mice at the spot's inner ring activate. They can either jump onto the minute hand or move to the outer section and take the corresponding action. Here's a look at some of the actions that the mice can do in the game. The magnifying glass lets you draw tiles from the bag. Some action spots let you spend a tile to get more tiles, take tiles from the web, or even gain a new mouse meeple. The card allows you to draw one favor card. These have a variety of benefits. Some I'm always glad to see, but <laughs> others are more situational. But at least you can always use them for the item instead. The chains let your mouse go up the chain on the cuckoo clock, which eventually will earn you points. And the bag allows you to deliver the item tiles your mouse has collected. This is a major way of getting points in the game. You'll get one point for each tile delivered, a point for each tile in the largest symbol group, and a point for each tile that is in the largest color group. So delivering these four tiles gives you 10 points, four for the number of tiles, three for the color, and three for the matching symbol. If your delivery matches one of the face-up quest cards, you can take it and score it. You can now place the deliver tiles on your player board if you have matching slots. You'll get points for each completed column and row at the end of the game. A big part of Hickory Dickory is that each of your mice has a special power. The scurrier can jump off the minute hand up to two spaces away. This can really come in handy when you're trying to complete a certain action at the right time or get a tile before <laughs> someone else. The spotter allows you to draw an extra tile from the bag whenever you take a draw tile action with that mouse. This helps when you're looking for a certain color or symbol to help with your deliveries or filling your player board. The scamp is not available to you at the beginning of the game, but you can get it during the game. It allows you to teleport to any outer ring and take that action. The scavenger is bigger than the others and takes up two spaces on the minute hand. It also has a larger bag to hold more tiles. This brings up some other interesting parts of the game. One is that the minute hand can only hold a certain number of mice at each player count. If it's full and someone jumps on, the mouse, or sometimes mice, at the front get bumped off onto the current or previous action space. They'll still get to take the action at the place where they landed, but it might not be the exact action the player was hoping to perform. That definitely happened to my mice during the game. <laughs> Most of the time you can sort of anticipate that happening since you can see the number of mice waiting to jump on the clock at different locations though. 
The other interesting part is that if you have multiple mice at a location, they can share their items. You can freely distribute the tiles like between them, which can help you get the colors and symbols together. Or even give tiles to a mouse who won't be moving for a while and let another mouse have spots available for future actions. I really find the moving of the mouse meeples one of the best parts of the game for me. When should I have a mouse jump on or off the clock hand? Maybe I want to let a mouse ride around for a little bit to take the best spot possible. Or get the mouse off earlier so they aren't forced off where I don't want them to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, I find the tile trading aspect to be really interesting. Do I have my mouse jump off the clock hand now for a really good action? Or do I leave it on a bit longer so mm -hmm. I can meet up with one of my other mice? So in one of our games, I ended up clumping my mice all together so they could share. And then it was a little difficult to actually get them to the other side of the clock without getting bumped mm -hmm. off. Let's talk a little bit about the theme. Hickory Dickory is sort of based off the nursery rhyme about a mouse running up the clock. And you definitely have that part, but now you have the mice sort of overrunning this clock. <laughs> <laughs> well, in addition to that, you also have the itsy bitsy spider hmm. who presides over the web market. <laughs> I personally think that the cuteness of the cover art might mislead people that this is a light, casual game. But there's a lot going on, and I would put this more in the medium weight category. It's one of my favorite games I've played in 2023 so far. Ooh. I'd say it takes a few turns to really grasp how the mice activate and then to plan a strategy. I found the rule book easy to follow with lots of good illustrations mm -hmm. and examples. Even the end of the round steps are thematic. So after the 12 o'clock tick has been achieved, Lord Cuckoo lets out a chirp. Oh. <laughs> so roll for the cat. Ooh, pause. C. C. <laughs> Rotate the hour hand. H. Move the mice to the inner ring. I. Refill the tiles and quest cards. R. And then move the priority marker. P. <laughs> <laughs> Theme definitely comes through in all the components and the illustrations. All the different shapes of the mice are fun and even connect a little with what their power is. The clock hands work well while playing the game, but one big downside is that you have to take the hands apart from the game board for storage. I wish there was a way that the board and clock hands sort of could have stayed together for an easier setup and breakdown. I really like that the player boards are not only inset to hold the tiles, but are also unique, so the combinations are different on each one. So let's move to that variability aspect. First, the action tokens around the clock are somewhat randomized mm -hmm. during setup, so from game to game, the order of actions can change. Mm -hmm. And like Kevin said, the player boards are unique. And of course, the tiles, quest cards, and favor cards are randomly placed out and drawn. So there is a good bit of tactical decision making based on the board state. Mm -hmm. So something we haven't talked about yet, really, are the cat paws. See. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of each round, you roll dice, and a couple of the action spots are blocked for the next round. So that could really change your plans. Yeah, I remember one game where I was planning on making a delivery of tiles with one mouse, but the delivery spot was blocked by the cat's paw. <laughs> I had to adjust what that mouse did for a round until the action spot opened back up the following round. So I don't think the game is going to feel drastically different from mm -hmm. game to game because there aren't modules to add in or variable player powers. Mm -hmm. The replayability comes from adapting to the board state, the random tiles and card draws, and the other player's decisions. Is Kevin gonna take the tile I want? Of course. <laughs> is he gonna jump on the clock with his large scavenger and push me <laughs> off? <laughs> is he going for the same quest card? <laughs> now, this game was on my most anticipated board games of 2023 list, and it definitely has lived up to what I envisioned. It brings something unique to the table, the moving of the clock hands. I always enjoy unique mechanisms done well in a game. Yeah, I agree that moving my mice on and off the clock hands makes the game more fun for me with that mm. tactileness. Mm. So the clock hands aren't just a gimmick. I agree. Overall, I've enjoyed my plays of Hickory Dickory. The theme and components are whimsical. Yep. The rules are fairly easy to grasp, especially if you're familiar with medium weight games. Oh yeah. And while I wouldn't say that this is a brain burner. No. 
There are interesting decisions to make, especially with trading items between your mice and managing your item tiles to pay for actions mm -hmm. and to keep for deliveries. I've also enjoyed Buy a Place, mm -hmm. the set collection, an interesting twist on the worker placement, and also has the cute theme with mice and clocks. Uh, if this caught your attention, then check out Hickory Dickory. So here's an interesting topic. What other games can you think of that have more strategy and complexity than their theme or art style would suggest? Hmm. Root would probably be my guess. Definitely. I would definitely <laughs> agree with that one. So uh, give us some more examples in the comments. Thanks for watching.